we're now looking at IT general controls. This is actually a type of control that internal auditors look a lot at. And in fact, I'd like to say that it's probably the type of control that, say, an accountant or a finance team or even an external auditor might care the most about as well. Because IT general controls are controls that apply to all systems, components, processes, and data for a given organization or IT environment. I think it's still a little bit vague, but we're going to get to some examples. Common ITGC, so internal uh, IT general controls, include strategy, organization, and management of the IT function. External auditors, especially, might request a certain formality, and internal auditors do as well, I might say, a certain formality of IT procedures. Why? Because this allows consistency. This gives a kind of base mark for what you should have as IT controls in an organization and allows testing against these. It also allows the different operational teams to work towards meeting the goals of the, the different strategy, organization, and management you know, policies and procedures within within an IT function. Operations and quality assurance procedures. Now, of course, you're thinking about internal auditors giving assurance, and indeed that is part of it. Other parts is indeed parts of the IT function, or indeed more independently, a CISO. So remember, a CISO is not usually part of an IT function, at least in best practice. A chief information security officer would be independent from the IT so that it doesn't get pressure from IT and would be able to give assurance directly on information security. And so operations and quality assurance procedure should include, for instance, you know, ha having a CISO starting from a certain size of organization and someone being able to you know, have an overview, an independent overview of, of the different you know, IT systems, IT security controls in place. Business continuity planning, BCP, and disaster recovery planning. There are documents, sure. You might have heard about a BCP DRP. They're often documents kind of showing different things, different actions to take given disruptions in a system. So let's think about this for a second. Of course, it is not just a document. It is kind of a structure around a company where given an incident, an event, which disrupts your normal business operations, you have a governance structure where immediately you can call on you know, uh, important people in the organization to decide what to do. I've been part of those uh, tests as an internal auditor. I've audited this as well. You would have you know, a different test. Now, I've simulated these tests. I've seen these tests for real that you know, when an incident is detected, then the whole management team or at least the, the critical management team and the IT team are called into action to actually you know, be able to do something. A case of this was, well, it was simply a, a gas breach in the neighborhood of our building, which might have affected access to our server room. Okay, so that was actually big enough to you know, block employees from entering the building and uh, you know, uh, trying to figure out alternative ways of uh, routing our, our, our uh, IT communications. Another one that I, I gave would be you know, disruptions to communication to, you know, say, whole countries. That, that might mean that you know, whole countries might not be able to work because communications with them might have been blocked. And so you, you, you'd have, for different levels of emergencies, you know, different ways of responding from your BCP DRP plans. Those were, in green, you know, the more, well, let me call it governance, policies, procedures, you know, the, the different approaches that 
you know, maybe ISO 27001, which cares a lot about you know, policies, procedures, governance, would really emphasize on. Here we're, we're getting a bit into the more technical parts with backup and restoration. And so this is a common ITGC control. Depending on the organization, you might have between real-time backups or daily backups. It's very important that these backups are tested. That's to say that you know, there have been many cases of organizations that have kept continuous backups, but without proper testing, didn't know that you would have incompatible formats or that the backups just didn't work. So it's very, very important to be able to test your backups. Also, if you have you know, non-real-time backups, or even if you do, maybe you need a backup from you know, three days ago, because if you had the backup from you know, the, the, the last three days, those were corrupted by, uh, say, a cyber attack. You don't know where the malware might have been installed. So you might, have, you might need a backup from three days ago, or one week ago, or one month ago. And so you have a whole thing about you know, rolling backups. When do you actually decide to you know, get rid of a backup? You might only keep one backup per month, say. Systems development and change controls. You have to understand that changes to a system have to be properly approved. You have to have proper approval to a system because otherwise, say, you know, a, a developer wants to you know, put in their own little feature, potentially a fraudulent uh, you know, a little change to an application, say a backdoor, so it could access the system without, uh, you know, without a password and username later on. Well, changes have to be approved and then verified after that. And you have a whole thing about, you know, uh, change control and systems development, uh, which is, you know, honestly beyond the scope of the CIA Part Three, but it's kind of good to know about at an awareness level. Systems programming and technical support, so it means that you have technical teams who are able to respond to ongoing issues and programmers, because one of the issues that I've uh, frequently seen in, in teams, you know, even the ones with their programmers, is that home-made applications without proper programmers in-house might have been made by a third-party you know, company who will then charge either exorbitant amounts to be able to you know, give ongoing service to the application they gave, or you know, I've, I've seen the case of simply you know, IT, small IT companies you know, going belly up, being bought up, no, no longer doing a service, and then you not being able to you know, have the IT staff in-house uh, with the knowledge, that's the important part, to actually remedy you know, problems. Physical security and access controls. I'm going to be very brief about this because we're going to see them very soon. Uh, logical access management, same thing. And protective and detective controls against threats. So, you know, detective controls means that you detect a threat. We're going to see some examples of that. Protective ones are, are things like firewalls that, you know, block against potential threats. Mm -hmm.